Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and it has been a while, but we are going to do a uh, early look at the NHL slate for this evening. Uh, we're going to talk about different ways to look at the slate, different ways to build lineups. Uh, if you're a hand builder, you could get something from this. If you're using contest sims, you can get something from this. Just again, I I, I struggle with the proper way to deliver content for this industry. And I, I'm really honing in on this idea of blending kind of evergreen content with, you know, daily actionable content. And to be able to give you advice that is, um, I don't know, that is timely, but also useful outside of this time frame. Um, and it's different. It's, it's a different way of thinking about it. And uh, yes. and so this is kind of my goal is to show you guys, yes, I could do a complete evergreen video on how to build lineups, but I think it's more important to actually apply it to an actual slate. Um, and yes, I could just say who I like on this particular slate, but I don't think that's exactly what we want either. So trying to find that, that mix. So. Uh, all right, so what we're looking at here is first the uh, the slate, and and I'm looking at it from Saber Sims, you know, uh, interface here. And the first thing I do like to do is figure out how the these games spread out, what we what we're expecting, and things like that before we even get into projections and everything like that. So I do see one, two, three, four, four seven o'clock games followed by a nine o'clock and a nine thirty. Um, and that's important because you are supposed to late swap when you have the opportunity to do so. And you do have a, you know, two hours of, of results to consider um, before you have to lock in, you know, your nine o'clock game. And then, you know, uh, if you wanted to also late swap again for your 930 game, it might be useful. I'm not going to get into this type of theory, but you really should always be late swapping whenever you have the opportunity, once you have information that you can then use to, to change your lineups. That being, you know, how, how players were owned before, how they're performing before, how your lineups are performing, you know, what the, what you, how your competition is doing, things like that. So let's take a look at some of these team totals. You have Toronto with a 3.5. You have uh, Vegas with a 3.9. You have Colorado with a 4.3, and then that's it. So everybody else is kind of pedestrian. So if you're looking at it, there's really kind of two slates. Um, there are really are two slates. There's the seven o'clock slate, which is where you have your Toronto and you know Vegas total. And then the nine o'clock slate where you have your Toronto totals. That is one way to think about this. You also see that several of the teams have their goalies locked in already. That's something to remember. You always have to double check your goalies. So we're going to expect to see probably something coming from Toronto, something, something, something coming from Vegas, and something coming from Colorado. The other thing I like to, I don't want to project, but to think about is Toronto has a 0.4. Uh, kind of implied goal difference where you have Vegas with a full one goal difference and Colorado with almost a two goal difference. And what that does is it does open up the possibility for, for some empty net, you know, empty net fig uh, for those teams that are more likely to be ahead by a goal. That being, or even two goals, that being uh, Vegas and uh, Colorado. And I don't think that the empty net goal Vegas is, is priced into the projections as much as maybe it should be considering how often uh, teams are pulling guys nowadays. Okay. So now let's take a look at my sheets and we're going to look at it from two different perspectives. First, we're going to look at it just from the individual players. Then we're going to look at it from the stacks. And the reason why I consider this a combination of evergreen plus whatever, what I've mentioned is that, yes, we're, we're, we're focusing on this slate, but this is the same process that I think is, is important to be used for all slates. And again, this is early, 
but you could do this late as well. You just don't have as much time. So I've rated everybody here by what I have sheets value score and, and not to get too into it, but that is kind of my own you know, metric, which is a combination of fantasy points and points per dollar. And we also have ownership projections here as well. And you can sort them by any, any, any method you want here. But I'd like to sort by sheets value score and then just kind of just take a real quick look and see what's up. And when I say that, I want to see if there are guys from the same team, you know, better, better yet still from the same line, that project well. And if so, then they're probably going to show up as a good stack. And, and, and the first thing I'll notice is, as always, these Colorado guys rate well, but are also extremely expensive, like McCarr, Rantanen, and McKinnon. They're all from the same line, and they're all rated high, but they're just always very tough to get in. The other thing that I'll notice is that these Vancouver guys, not excuse me, Vegas, we got one, two, three, four Vegas guys, no, excuse me, five, six Vegas guys, all in this top crew, and they are much more inexpensive. Uh, led leading the way, well, actually, they're leading the way is Michael Amadio or Amadio, whatever, at 3,300. Now, he doesn't have that correlation. He's only on the second even strength line, but he is in the second power play line. So you could pair him with, with uh, Petrangelo. Uh, or we can get to Nicholas Roy, who is on the second power play line, and Shea Theodore, who's on the second even, even straight line. So, so you have a lot of value on, Vancouver, uh, on Vegas. So this is going to be probably the easiest stack to play, which probably means it's going to be the highest own. But we're not going to worry about that quite yet. We're just trying to figure out who's the best plays. And so far, it looks like it would be some combination of Vegas. The thing I don't see are these other guys. Like, who is it? Who was playing Boston, Toronto? Yeah, actually, there's Matthews here. Nylander. But not even on the same line. So this Toronto situation, even though you would expect them to have good projections, they just don't. So to me, it looks as though if I were hand building, it would be a really easy hand build type slate. You would just play all these Vegas guys, and then you could do whatever you want. I think you do whatever you want. Another thing I do like to look at, there's any other cheapos. Uh, you have know, Backlin, 4,600 is cheap. Tyson Forrester, 4,500 cheap. Um, these could, you know, show up as decent one-offs if you if you wanted to. So before we even get into building, the next thing that I want to do in the process is look at the stacks, and and we have a stack tool where we kind of rate them in a similar way. We're going to rate teams by first raw points, which is over here, as you see, Colorado top raw points, followed by Toronto. Then Florida, Rangers, Boston, Calgary. So they're all very close, but and there's Vegas all the way down there. When you rate them by points per dollar, uh, Vegas, not surprisingly, ranks number one. Then you've got Calgary and then Philly, Chicago. And then when you sort by modified stack, which is a combination really of these two metrics, you're getting the Colorado, Toronto, Boston, and there's Vancouver, and there's Vegas again. So Vegas looks like they show up in a lot of places. They look like a really, really strong play. So when you're hand building, it's going to be really, really easy to do. So just to give you an idea of how you could build, you don't have to, but you could build by hand here. You know, you could just, I mean, really, you could just jam whatever you want here. Um, so let's just try the one one. So March Assault, Carlson. We don't have to get to a Medio, really, but probably should. The Medio and Shea, I mean, this becomes like really easy. Now, it is an early game, so that's, we don't usually like to get go overboard on the early games, but I mean, it looks like such a good play. March Assault, Carlson, uh, let's, let's, let's try to get them all in. So we'll play a Medio, we'll play Shea. Um, Shea Theodore, and then we could play Petrangelo too. I mean, you can play five Vegas guys really easily. And then you could probably even get to some Colorados or Torontos if you want by playing this way, you know? Um, 
take a look at how goalies look. Bennington, 7,300, 7, nice and cheap. So we like that. I'm just I'm just picking up Junior. It's kind of a random cheap goaltender, which protects well, which is good. So at 5,200 a man, I mean, you could probably even get to some some decent other other guys. Like you can get to – maybe you can't get to Matthews. I mean, that's that's a little bit asking for it, you know. But eh, maybe you can't get to any of them. You can't get to McKinnon. So you're just kind of stuck with this Vegas thing. But that's 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 not bad. You know what you could do? You could play uh, those Calgary guys I talked about. I mean, if you want. Who's a backland up here? And then we see who backland pairs with, for example. Um, so he's he's first first even strength and second power play. You could play this guy from Calgary and the utility if you want. Or who else? Any other Calgary guy? Yeah, so Manjapani. I mean, he's really cheap, too. Or Hoover. I mean, look at this. I mean, if you play Manjapan over here, I mean, you could, I mean, you can you can really do some stuff. You know, you play Kadri, then you can move up in goaltender if you want. So it's not very difficult to build by hand today. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. So then what I want to do is now let's bring Sabersim into the mix here. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload these projections into Sabersim. And we're going to see what Sabersim gives us both from a uh, Saber score perspective and from a contest simulation perspective. So we're just going to upload our custom projections in here. Oh, Josh Manson's out. We'll exclude him. And we're going to build, I don't know, We'll, we'll build um, 40 lineups. That's actually what I'm playing today. And we, actually, we're going to build 4,000 lineups. Just so we have a big pool to choose from. And we're going to rate these 4,000 lineups in, in several different ways. And when and hockey is very cool because hockey, the, you get like different builds depending on what settings you use, which I think makes this kind of one of the more fun sports. It's not just... You know, NBA is kind of like a, a just a competition of projections, sort of, you know, like you have a good, the best projections and can be, do a reasonable job of building lineups. You don't you don't get it's not so event driven that uh, that that you can get that different and expect to have a chance where hockey, you know, you, you can get different and have a chance. So when you try to sim these results, if you can get different with something that has a chance. You, th this is what you're going to want to play. So let's just take a look. So the first thing we're doing is we're looking at the top 40 and this is rated by Sabre score. And this is just their default, you know, setting. I won't, don't want to get too into this, but, but let's just say that it, that it factors in upside, a higher percentile outcome. And also it, you know, it rewards you for having lower owned guys to some degree. So when you see, now, uh, it's important to take a look to see what we would get. You'd be getting, you know, 85% Colorado. So I guess they're making it a little easier to get to these Colorado guys than I was. And I see that one of the reasons why is they're getting this Max Domi at 3,300, which I didn't see. And it's using even some of these other cheaper Vegas guys, including Potter at 2,600. So that's how you can get to Colorado. Now, so you could just go ahead and use these. But what I like to do is go into stack exposure and make sure that I'm getting the type of stacks that I want. I don't think that, uh, I don't want to say I don't think they do a good job, but I think that I can be a little greedier than Saberson with respect to, you know, Xing out these non-5, 2, 4, 3, or 6 lineups. Um, and when we did that, now we have the Sabre score, you know, builds, and you're getting still 75% Colorado, 47% Calgary. Really not getting any of the Vegas, which is interesting. And one thing you could do, if you want, is you can change this min unique state from min uniques one to say min uniques two or three, 
where it'll kind of spread out your exposures a little bit more. And I think that's sort of healthy. And when you do that, you're still getting, I mean, they really want you to jam this, this Colorado stuff, you know? So, but what's, what's also interesting is when you spread out over the course of all, you know, 4,000 lineups, the highest owned would have been Vancouver. I'm just going to Vegas, but in your top 40 rated this way, uh, you're getting more Colorado. So you could then go and just kind of just put these in like this, but let's see what we would get if we try to sim our 4,000 lineups against some pool of lineups. So question is, which what, what pool of lineups do we want to simulate our results or our lineups against? So if you if you want, you could go to their their defaults, which are Sabre Sim ownership. Like this would be the 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 defaults is is you'd be simming your lineups against a set of lineups that were based on where they thought that people would own them. Um, but what I found is that it's a little better, especially if you you know have faith in your projections or whatever that. Um, you want to compare them to uh, maybe this field of 4,000 you built in the first place. So what to, what you want to do there is instead of using Sabre Sim ownership, you select, say, build two, which is what we just built, build two. And so what we're trying to do is just is compare our lineups to the full 4,000. And then we're going to re-rate ours based on... Uh, on how they how they simulate against those. So let's save these, and then we're going to hit con run contest sims, and we're going to run our four thousand lineups against really our four thousand lineups. You think about that, right? So we're going to rate our four thousand, and then we're going to presume that that entire pool is spread out ownership wise, the way this whole pool is, and then it's going to pick the top forty based on how they perform on an ROI basis against this entire pool. So if there's a set of lineups or, or an ownership that's going to be particularly owned, we're going to get a little credit if we beat that one. So let's um, let's go back to Min Unique's one for a second and let's see what this would look like. Let's first take a look at the, at the kick save, which is the, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the big GPP. And we're going to sort our lineups by risk-adjusted ROI against that pool. So now what we're getting is, yes, we're still getting a lot of Colorado, but not as much. And Vancouver pulls up a little bit, as does Philadelphia. And under stack exposures, we're still almost getting what we need. So we can get rid of the four zeros. We can get rid of the two, 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 twos, et cetera. And then again, now if we want, we can go ahead and go to min unique two or something like that. And, you know, spread our exposure a little more. And depending how confident you are, you can go to min unique three, for example. And I think this is pretty good. Let's just double check, make sure the stack exposure is what we want. Four threes, five two sixes. But we can just go ahead and save these to the, the kick set. Now we go on to the other M, 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 uh, the other big GPP, which is the poke check. And this is, you know, again, another big, uh, big, big GPP with a lot of players in it. So we're now rating them by ROI against that. And I think it's pretty similar. Yeah, it's pretty similar. But we'll save them here into the poke check. And then we'll go back to that hand-built one, which is when I have the bigger buy-in. It's the penalty kill. And the penalty kill, we can go back to mini unique one, for example. And uh, and this is what our top lineup would be rated against that particular lineup. So we can go ahead and, and put that in for now. And, and this is really the process that I would use. Now, the other thing is that, is that as I kind of alluded to before, sometimes in hockey, you get a big, big difference between, or big delta sort of between what your lineups look like based just on Sabre score and what they look like based on when you try to sim them out against the contest. But in this particular slate, you will see that it didn't really make 
that much of a difference. It made a decent amount, but not that much. So with that, that actually gives me, well, some confidence that I'm going to do okay. But it definitely gives me a little bit of, you know, fear that I'm not getting unique enough. Okay, so I'm not expecting to like take everything down, you know, in this particular slate. I'm project projecting myself to have a pretty decent ROI, okay, which is pretty good. Uh, I hope that helps. And again, obviously, this is not actually what I'm putting in because everything's going to change between now and lock. But that's the process that I use. Hopefully, uh, oh, so I guess I should have led with this. So all this stuff can, is available on TrueDFS.com. Uh, I think all this is premium, so should, you're getting this for free because I'm doing this video. But but um, all those sheets I showed you and access to Saverson, you can you know you could go on to TrueDFS.com and I'm sure we have some kind of trial or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.